Let's look at a geometric sequence in series as an example uh, for compound interest. I think that's a nice way to sort of put them together. Um, well, first we need our example here. So let's just say I have an example. Um, maybe I invest some money. Now I'm going to invest, let's say, in US dollars or Canadian or whatever it is. Let's say I invest $10,000 and um, let's say I leave it in the bank. I want to leave it in the bank. Let's say I'll leave it for three years. And let's say that I get, so I'll say, and I get, or I earn. Now, this is not at all realistic. I'll give you something that's like really awesome. Let's say I earn an interest rate of 10%. Trust me, if I could find a bank where you could just regularly invest like this at 10% per year, I would be a rich man. But this is sort of just showing you here. So it's 10% per year. Sometimes we write this as 10% and we say PA. That means per annum. That's just another way of saying per year. And, um, and let's say interest is calculated. interest is calculated uh, let's say just once each year now what do we mean by interest we mean that you leave your money in there and you you earn 10% of that amount of money every year or at the end of that year I suppose you could say so the question could be then you know how much do I have after three years that's sort of the that's the question so after those three years how much do I have well this is we could see it as it's geometric geometric because we have a common ratio so that's because it keeps I mean they keep giving me more money so I'll say here they keep uh, keeps giving me more money but um, I'm gonna need to find the rate or in other words not the rate but I need the ratio the common ratio because in a geometric sequence or series we have to have a common ratio so let's take a look at this then um, my common ratio is going to be well let's think now of this at the end of one year I'm going to get what well, hundred percent of what I put in there plus I'm going to get 10% of that value. So in other words, I have 110%. And if I want to write that sort of as, well, literally what percent means is divide by 100. So 110 divided by 100, that really gives me 1.1. So my rate is 1.1. That's my common, not rate, sorry, my ratio. That's 1.1. ,1. Maybe I won't put this with a square bracket. Maybe I'll leave it as... Uh, I'll say it's uh, with a circular bracket here. So, so R equals 1.1. I'm going to need that value. Now, I think it's nice to sort of do this by hand here. So let's let's maybe calculate this. So after, so maybe I'll do this like this. I'll say um, in year zero. In other words, we're going to say initially. And after that, I'm going to say in or let's say after one year let's say let's call it that so just to make sure it's clear here so we're going to consider in year zero we're going to say after one year we're going to say after two years and we're going to finally say after three years that's going to be the idea behind it except i think yeah we'll see if i need some more space here but uh, let's say here this is after so uh in year zero initially how much money do i have well, all I have is just 10,000. That's it. That's all I have. Uh, maybe I'll put this in a different color. Actually. I'll put it in, maybe in black. So I just have $10,000. That's it. Now, after one year, however, what do I do? Well, I have $10,000, my initial amount, but I have to multiply that by my ratio. So in this case, times 1.1. Well, then it's going to be, um, what's that going to be? 11,000. 
So that's what I'll have. But after two years, well, I have to take my same value. In other words, I'm going to add 10% of this new value. So really, if I want to keep track of everything, I take my one, uh, my 10,000 times 1.1 and multiply that times 1.1. So in other words, I could say then that it's like saying 10,000 times 1.1 squared. And that will be, uh, in this case, uh, 12,100. And then after three years, well then I have to of course do it one more time. So just to save some space here, it'll be times 1.1 cubed. In this case then, I will have 13,310. So I could say therefore I will have, so I will have $13,310 after three years. Wouldn't that be great? Just leave it for three years and you essentially, you make uh, $3,310 just by sort of having it sit there. That's pretty nice. And of course, the more money you put in, you know, the more you get out of it, of course. Now that's how it works sort of in, uh, in general. Now what we can do though is, um, we can say this then. So after, maybe we can put it a little bit more generically. So after n years, in this case you have 10,000 times, um, I guess say our rate, which was our ratio, sorry, 1.1 to the power of n. That's how much you're going to have. See, after three years, then you just put this as a three. After four years, you have this. Now, as a little side note, um, maybe we can sort of see this if we wrote it as a sequence, let's say. Let's say we just wrote it as, uh, you know, U1, let's say. Well, U1, that would be your initial amount, that would be 10,000. And that's basically, that's your amount after zero years. You can see it as that, like after zero years. And then U2, that would be 10,000, uh, in this case right here, just times 1.1. So that right there would be you know, after one year. And of course you'd have U3, well that would be 10,000 times 1.1 squared. That's after two years. And finally, U4 would be 10,000 times 1.1 to the power of three. And that's after three years. The only weird thing that happens here is look at this. My first term is after zero years. My second term is after one year. My third term is after two years. And fourth term is after three years. So it's almost like, I can't quite say u of n equals this to the power of n. It's not quite that. If you look at this, this is one more than the number of years. So in general, this is just a little weird thing here. We could say then that u of n plus one. That's just the important thing. It's just that term. Well, that's going to be the initial amount. So in this case right here, whatever you start off with, your initial investment uh, times your ratio to the power of n. So that's in a sense how you can deal with this. Where this right here, this is the number of years. Oops, maybe I'll put this in different uh, color here. So I'll say that this right here, uh, that's after, oops, maybe I want this, that color instead. So this n right here, that'll be um, after n years, right? That's the number of years. This right here is your ratio. This right here is your initial investment. And this u n plus one, this just it looks a little bit weird, but if you actually want to calculate this, this is technically the fourth term. It's because if you look at this, this was the first term was this, second term was this, third term was this, fourth term was this. So it's a little bit of a weird thing that if you want after three years, you actually have to have the fourth term in this sort of geometric uh, sequence. That's just a matter of notation, I think.